Ah, okay, here we go. Uh, got some uh, spring water. Actually, it's a, what's it called? What's it called? My God, I know it was, was Thirst is the name of the company, or Thirsty. It's called Natural Spring Water. Natural Spring Water. In fact, I'm putting it in this cup that has some uh, some goji berries in there. See? You got go Well, you can't. I got, believe me, I got goji berries in this cup. And what I'm doing is, uh, I don't know why I did that. What I'm doing is I'm hydrating the goji berries because I use them in my uh, smoothies in the morning. And my smoothies, uh, um, no, take fruit. What's my other fruit? Oh, it's in the refrigerator. Sorry about that. Well, no, got grape, uh, seeded grapes. Um, what do you call that? Um, what do I have in there? Not papaya. Uh, I got oh apple, pear, bunch of stuff. The second in the morning, every morning, all night long, because of the way I function, my body gets rid of stuff. And so in the mornings, I gotta blow my nose a lot. Yeah, real stuff. My body's been flushing out. All right, well, get to the point. Uh, so, oh, let's do some. Um, how I say some? I, they call it housekeeping. Oh, I'm in. I'm actually in the Lajote house right now. The Lajote house is dedicated to, uh, as Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. would say, a thought, speech, and uh, action. So you're thinking, and uh, so you're thinking. In this house, we talk. Sometimes we talk what we've been thinking, and then we go out there for action. Right, that's the whole concept. It's like a think tank. Think of it as a think tank. You all need some some modern references. I like that. Um, uh, and uh, as you all may may not know, every time I go different places, I have different what we call what I call sets. My set decoration. In this particular hotel house, um, when I'm doing these from here, my set decoration is oh, see this flag right here. That's uh, the David Hammond's play. It's, a, it's an art piece. People think it's black liberation. But I guess it is. So, but uh, it symbolizes all uh, well, black people in the United States, the black the 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 the, the source of a lot of stuff, right? But it's, a, it's an art piece. It, it, you know, it used the red, black, and green from from when Marcus Garvey created the Pan African, whatever it is. But the star, the stars and the bars, you know, come, he that's how he interpreted it. it what he did in the in the in the eighties. Whenever he did it, I want to interview that guy sometime if I ever get to it. Uh, anyway, uh, so I, I particularly like that flag. It goes every place I go. I have little I have ver different ver I have versions of it. I have it hanging uh, all over the place in Virginia. It's, it's all over the place. I have it um, there in, in Gubevu, where I live in the village. Um, uh, that kind of thing. And this is just a cloth that has South African flag in there. And if you oh you don't see it, but up top there's a like I said, I could bring it down. There's a, you see that that blue with the stars, uh, the white white uh, white background with the stars. That's from um, the Honduran flag, and that's a, a tribute or whatever have you, or a thing, if I could say it that way. Uh, that deal will come back here. My gimbal has a mind of its own, uh, and that's uh, that symbolizes uh, basically my uh, my uh, paternal. Lineage, uh, which is um, Garifuna, Garifuna, however you want to say it, uh, from because uh, they was dumped off in, uh, in the Honduran islands, and that's all the rare ten islands in Honduras, and that, that's from the Honduran flag. There's a whole other story how that came to me, whatever it has to do with the World Cup when I was here. Well, I mean, I'm still here in South Africa, so that's the set. Go oh, and there you see a little camouflage uh, coat that I have, a raincoat, a camouflage. Um, I guess that symbolizes if you want to say struggle, war, or whatever you want to do. Talk about struggle, war. Hey, look what I'm wearing today. Oh, my Chris Hani t-shirt that I got from Brother Isaiah over there in, um, in Maracana. Well, he has a booth there. But this is a, a Chris Hani. He said, this is this is actually, I think we should call this Chris Hani month. Um, when I, I, I had an initiative, um, part of an initiative here in Southern Africa, in, in Cape Town, out of Cape Town, uh, uh, it came about every September uh, was Steve Biko Steve Biko month of September. Let's put it that way. And so every September uh, or for a few years, about five years uh, straight, did uh, this these uh, these uh, cultural these concerts, these music concerts for people all over the world, and uh, it was to commemorate uh, Steve Biko, right? And um, because that's when he was uh, you know the 
Ludovico Rossi Ugini, the demise, let's put it that, his uh, assassination, right? And uh, and we're in April right now, April 10th marks, uh, uh, like this April 10th marks the 30th, the 30th year that uh, Chris Hani was assassinated. Well, let me count this. It's April, so let's go in. April, May, June, July, August, September. We have five months apart, uh, pretty well, like that. So uh, Chris Hani, one of my... Uh, uh, um, thought leaders, one of my people I refer to, you know, um, for, se for Southern African um, situation, I basically, my Southern African heroes are, are Chris Hani and uh, Mangalisa Robert Sabupe. Those two, that's it. Do, 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 do. Yes, CP goes cool. No, no, no worries. You know, you know, and uh, whatever y'all want to pick, y'all are cool. But I do those two for Southern Africa, have other people for the rest of Africa, you know, Cabral and like that stuff, and, and of course, uh, the Caribbean, you know, where you got your uh, Walter Rodney, a bunch of, you know, things like that. Oh, so now I got, I was like, all Africa, I, I got to mention Thomas Sankara. That's one of my, ooh, I met Thomas Sankara, shook his hand. Uh, um, so, uh, so I have, I have um, reference heroes, if you want to, or whatever, all over the world. <sighs> uh, so all that out the way, ooh, let me tell you what I was talking about. One of the things that concerns me is academia. You know, academia has been taken over. The co when a colonizer came to Africa, he colonized the, the land first, but then it's part of his process, if you will, and it's all over the world. He colonized the mind. And uh, then as it kept on going, one of the, one, actually one of the ways to colonize the mind was by having uh, the, the missionaries come and set up schools. So that's colonized the, the mind. Uh, and my, my problem with modern academia, be it's, Southern Africa, uh, U.S., wherever you want to say, is as far as where uh, black people are struggling. And black people, when I say black people, I do mean black people, but we're the vanguard. So I'm talking about the vanguard struggle. I'm going to talk about the masses struggle. Right now, there's stuff going on in France. Oh, by the way, France is very interesting because, you know, the blacks, the students, the students' uprisings that happened in the 60s, it actually started in France at a, at a, film, at a film club. You know what I mean? Kind of real interesting. Then it went to basically uh, 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 Mexico and, and, uh, and San Francisco State, you know, in, 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 in the States. So France started, ooh, then maybe they got that whole revolutionary thing in their blood. I don't know. But they're, they're uprising like really big time. I mean, they, they're, they, they went went to BlackRock, you know, the people that own a whole lot of stuff, you know, with, 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 you know financial world. There. So that's kind of interesting what's happening in the world. People are, woo. But anyway, so what, so academia, what these big universities, you want to get a degree, you want to, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm a, a whatever, he, he the who would have my degree is, this, that, 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 not knowing that do they colonize your mind. But if you, you can, you can use that same institution and uh, decolonize your mind, I suppose, you know, but one of the people on the forefront of uh, the decolonization of your mind is a cat, it's an African named uh, Pilo Lumumba, who is an academic. See, I don't have, I don't take much stock. I shouldn't say it that way, but I'm gonna say it. I don't take much stock in academia or, or academics who uh, who aren't doing like the PLO uh, uh, the Mumba thing. You see what I'm saying? Most of them fall in line, and they, you know, oof, it's it's just a shame. Let me let me do an American context for just a second, so you understand what I'm saying. You know, a lot of the problems that happens with Black America is from that thing that uh, that guy uh, uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan. You know, he his little studies he did a. He was doing sociology, whatever he was doing, right? And he put this whole paper out about black America, study black America or black the black situation. Then they saw that that that's what led to the black man being out of the house, you know, basically destroying the black family, right? Now to this day, I don't know any black academic who said, "Hey, wait a second, how did this Irish descendant who can't who, who have no you know come and to study us and destroy our family? Why aren't our black academics studying?" I'm studying Daniel Patrick Moynihan and his people. You know what I mean? I mean, I know there are some books. You know, when the, when the Irish was when the, when the Irish was white, whatever, whatever that book is. You know what I mean? I understand that, but my point really is, you know, our academic our academic people, we, they, we don't they're not used. They don't go against the state, or at least the academics that we know. You know, and they might have some fine speeches, whatever have you. Yeah, I know you. you pull a few people out of the hat, but they just talking, da, 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 da. they have no popular movements. They have, and basically, they really don't have any movement behind them. They have an institution behind them that pays their salary. You know, they can have their little, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, mixers, you know, where they, they have their little Hennessy and a, and a, and a, and a, a brandy and a, and a glass, you know. Oh, oh, I'm back to France with the brandy, you know. Oh, back to point. 
So that's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking about uh, these days. You know, we're doing certain things in the hotel house, but um, so you'll you'll know about it, and um, and you hopefully you'll appreciate it. You know, I gotta do. Oh, today we're doing. Uh, do I do? It? No, not nearly full of today. Oh, I'm doing this. Uh, South African book, Saul Plagi. Uh, we're gonna do a little reading. I have a uh, my uh, my uh, my cat here in uh, in uh, Southern Africa. Well, in in Dimbaza, where we are right now, is uh, Nasa Kloli. He'll be by soon, you know, and we'll see what happens. So, so that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Right? You be well, and uh, you know, hey, keep it up. Says says, says me, T from the Pattersons, taking the trains to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>